The history of Our Lady of Peña Francia may be traced back to Simon Vela, a French man who was born in 1401. Simon was a very religious person and who had a great love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. One day, while he was praying alone, he lost consciousness. He heard a voice saying to him, Simon, be vigilant. Wake up. Be on the watch. From now on, your name will be Simon Bella. Go to Peña de Francia, west of this country, and look for an image similar to me. There, you will be told what to do. Upon regaining consciousness, he vowed to do what the Blessed Virgin was asking him. He started his mission and traveled far and wide in search of a place called Peña de Francia. For five long years, he had reached and explored many caves, hills, mountains and plains in the western part of France, but he could not find Peña de Francia, or could anybody tell him where it is located. In his search, he reached a place called San Martin de Castañar. Coming out from the church after hearing Mass, he saw a coal vendor and asked him if he knew a place called Peña de Francia. The man accompanied him to a place some distance from the church and pointed to him a hill in the far distance where Peña de Francia could be found. He also learned that in the distant past, the place was occupied by French people who valiantly resisted the vigorous attacks of the Moors, hence the name Peña de Francia or Rock of France. After a long and weary journey, Simon finally reached the rocky hill. By this time, he was exhausted and very hungry, but he continued the steep and craggy climb. Today, we know that the place rises to 1,723 meters between two Extremadura provinces, Caceres and Salamanca. On his first night at the mountaintop, a storm dislodged a piece of rock that fell on his head, causing a wound. As he lay prostrate, the Virgin appeared again and told him, Do not be afraid. Look for the image I told you to find. Early dawn on the third day, he saw at a distance, a glaring and dazzling light, filling the place with an unusual brilliance. He approached the place and there, to his overwhelming delight, he came face to face with the Virgin Mary with the child Jesus cuddled in her arms. He could not contain his joy. And the Virgin Mary told him to dig on the spot, and he will find the treasure he was looking for. He was to place it on the summit and there build the church. Then the lady suddenly disappeared. Immediately, Simon started digging, but he heard again a voice telling him not to do it on his own but to get help from some men in the village. So Simon went back to the town of San Martin de Castañar and asked five men to help him. These men were Antonio Fernandez, Juan Pascual, Pascual Sanchez, Juan Fernandez, and Benito Sanchez. The men thought they were digging for hidden treasure. On 19 May 1434,
After removing a huge stone, they found embedded among the rocks the image of the Holy Virgin with a child in her arms. Thus, the original image of Our Lady of Peña Francia was found. Immediately, the wound on Simon's head was healed. Pascual Sanchez's eye defect disappeared. Juan Fernandez was cured of his 10-year-old stomach illness. Antonio Fernandez, who was deaf, began to hear clearly, and Benito Sanchez's congenitally deformed finger became normal. Word spread like wildfire, and that was the start of the devotion to Our Lady of Peña Francia. Sometime in the later part of the 17th century, a boy named Miguel Robles de Covarrubias was born to a couple from San Martín de Castañar. Miguel grew up with a great devotion to Our Lady of Peña Francia. Miguel was a sickly young man. He had a picture of Our Lady of Peña Francia, to whom he would always pray when he was ill or confronted with difficulties, and she would always answer his prayers. He studied at the University of Santo Tomas in preparation for priesthood. He promised himself that when he has the financial resources, he would build a chapel for the Virgin by the back of the Pasig River in Manila. However, he was assigned to Nueva Caceres, now Naga, and there was ordained a priest by Bishop Antonio Gonzalez. To fulfill his vow, he built a chapel of local materials, not by the Pasig River as he once envisioned, but at the slope of Mount Isarog, as requested by the Aitas, also called Cimarrones, living in the mountains. The Cimarrones who had embraced the Catholic faith had a hard time going to Mass because the church in Naga was a couple of kilometers from where they lived. Father Miguel contracted a local artisan to make an image of the Virgin of Peña Francia. When the image was made, a dog was killed to stain the icon with the animal's blood as a preservative and in order to make the color dusky to approximate the complexion of the Samaranis. The dead dog with its four legs tied was thrown into the river. In a few minutes, the dog was witness swimming to the shore and running to his master's house. That was the start of the countless miracles that Our Lady of Peña Francia would perform throughout the next 300 years. Every September, a fiesta marks the fist of Our Lady of Peña Francia, or Ina. The highlight of the celebration is called the Traslacion a procession to transfer the image from its shrine into the minor basilica to the cathedral in Naga, where she stays during the entire novena. The image has to be transferred from the smaller shrine to the bigger basilica, which is almost two kilometers away, to accommodate the great crowd attending the festival. At the end of the fiesta, the image is brought back to its shrine, this time by means of a colorful fluvial parade. The Peña Francia Fiesta in Norwich started upon the encouragement of Father Norland Julia, a Bicolano Jesuit priest who once studied in London and minister to the Filipinos in Norwich and other parts of the United Kingdom. 
In 2011, he suggested that Piccolanus gather for a nine-day novena to Ina and culminate it with a mass and a fluvial procession at the Rocks on Broads. For the first two years, the Peña Francia Fiesta in Norwich was participated in mainly by Filipinos in Norwich. But from 2013 to the present, devotees from various parts of the Diocese of East Anglia and even beyond came to join the celebrations held on the third Sunday of September. The feast day itself is preceded by Inas Patsunko visitation to the communities who would join the Mass and Fluvial procession in Norwich. Each year, Ina draws more and more of her children to herself. In her gentle, motherly way, she leads her children to her son, Jesus Christ.